Welcome this week to Western Medicine, the humanity behind vanity. We're on 1260 AM KTRC. I'm Dr. Daniel Rennell. I'm here with my wife, Betsy Rennell. We've got a great show today. Uh, we're sponsored by Suniva, the makers of Artifil. Today we're going to talk to Testa Gange about inner beauty. We're going to talk to Dr. Scott Thomas, our psychotherapist, about the uh, issues behind pla in involving plastic surgery. Testa Gange is the reflexologist yes. from last week. Thank you. And um, what do you want to talk about? Well, I thought I'd bring up just the horror story of the week, which is that baby and that mother that were in their car accident, that the car blew up, this was mm -hmm. in Wisconsin, and the baby, like it looked like about three or four, three years old, trapped inside and burned over 30% yeah. of its body. Oh, but the firefighters got him out, the off-duty firefighters. They yeah. just came in and rescued him. That was... oh, I love firefighters. And I love policemen, and I love animal control. <laughs> You're all so brave. The firefighters are just... Something yes, about you. Yeah, something something about really you. Part. I love you. Right. Okay. So, no, so let's discuss. That, so that little that, baby is going to start its life off with 30% of a burned body. Right. And I mean, that was proper English. No, it's okay. He'll survive. Oh, should, of course. He should survive. Yeah. I mean, you know, 15, 20 years ago, that would be really uh, life threatening. Yeah. Now, what he's facing is um, years of rehabilitation and plastic surgery to reconstruct, yeah, surgery, to, right? to reconstruct what's been burned. I, I don't know anything about what's happened to him, but from my experience, where where I was in New York, we were at the New York New York State Firefighters Burn Center. I think is the second largest burn center in the country, mm -hmm. and uh, especially after 9/11, we yes. had, we were just inundated with, as you can imagine, and so. Um, are, you know, my experience is that these kids will need lots of reconstructive yeah. surgeries in the future to, you know, fix their hands, fix their faces, fix their chests. This little one, at a glance on the YouTube video, looked like his head was gray. Mm -hmm. So probably, you know, it probably got up what was exposed, his little hands, his head, his face. Oh, a little baby. You know, and thank God for, uh, well, first, thank God for those firefighters for moving so fast, because yeah. they just did not hesitate. Right. They are such heroes. They, too, are going to have serious burns on their arms and hands, because that's all in there, if not even some of their face. But also, thank God for plastic surgeons who do the reconstructive work, um, because it's funny. We all, usually, for the most part, we all think of plastic surgery as a beauty and, you know, an escape and whatever. It's not. The uh, hard and tr hard truth of it all is that there is a serious amount of reconstructive surgery that goes on. Yeah, most plastic surgeons, you know, started out as reconstructive right. surgeons. Yeah, and uh, the whole field of plastic surgery started out um, as treating World War One and World War Two battle mm -hmm. victims and reconstructing their faces and their limbs. And then you and had 9-11 in your training. Right, and so, uh, right, so my training was just full of reconstruction. Absolutely, um, unfortunately, but yeah. Right, because of that. Yeah. So, what kind of, I mean, I don't know your patients because of the HIPAA, and I certainly don't want to know because what if I made a slip one day, that would be horrible. But, um, you know, well, I know that you have kids in your practice just because they make up a lot of, what, what yeah, kind I mean, of cases? I have a, there's a really common uh, childhood injury is uh, the skull burn when a child reaches up on the counter and pulls down something uh. burning. Like that's, you know, when I was a pediatrician, I would always teach my parents to, um, right. you know, turn the handles of the pot in and watch out for the coffee makers. So, you know, first I saw them as a pediatrician and I would refer them and now I saw them as a plastic surgeon. And so when you pull down, when a child pulls down, a scalding thing, they often scald their chest. chest yeah. And um, in, a, in, a, in a girl who's, you know, four or five, because that's about the age they're doing it, that can retard the growth of the breast. Oh. It can cause scarring, yeah. and then they go into puberty and into the teenage years with one breast dif different size than the other. So I'm sure their nipples are deformed too. <sighs> yeah, and it's really psychologically, uh, you know, impactful on them, oh, that, you know, yeah. not just in the locker room, but going out on dates and... Oh, every, and even when thing. they wake up and look in the mirror, you know, yeah. with all these perfected plastic mm -hmm. surgery done uh, images we all right. see every day, right. a little girl growing up into herself, looking right. at her, you know, misshapen or malformed breasts, um, right. you know, it's just devastated. Boys have their right. issues too. What are some common, you know, procedures or surgeries or cases that you've had to do on kids in your career? Um, a lot of um, ones. a lot of separating fingers from a burnt hand because as the hands get burned, they, the fingers can get fused. Oh. 
so that's a complicated uh, but but common burn and a lot of uh, like I said the, the chest. chest and often the neck sort of gets scarred yes. down so you have to release the neck so that they can that's turn huge I remember reading about that when we were studying for your boards right. that's a huge number and number mm -hmm. and decades mm -hmm. long of surgeries yeah. yeah and it's not just burn um, survivors there are a lot of kids who have congenital right. issues right. There's, They're there's born a, a certain way, or yeah. There's, there's. You know, a I see, way. I see a lot of young women who have one breast that just didn't grow. Oh. There's a syndrome called Poland syndrome, where um, the breast doesn't grow. And and I had one teenager who came to me who needed a breast augmentation. Yeah. You know, that doesn't make How sense. How old was she? She was uh, in her senior year in high school, so 17. probably 16 or 17, right? 17 or 18, and so. Plastic surgeons in general don't do breast augmentations on teenagers. This is a totally different thing. The breast augmentation for cosmetic purposes needs to be done in somebody who, as an adult, understands the risks and the benefits right. and how they're going to change and, and so forth. And most teenagers don't quite get that. No, uh, that's not possible. The whole reconstructive field is, is a different story. This, this young woman, you know, grew up all through high school with one breast much smaller than the other and she needed a true breast augmentation. What made her finally come to you at this point? Because, I mean, she had lived with it through the hardest part of her developmental years. Her, her prom was coming up. You know, her prom was going to be in a couple months. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think her mother just realized how important this social event it would be in her life. Right. And she wanted to give this uh, to her daughter. And she noticed that as her daughter was getting older, she was actually getting a little more withdrawn oh. and, and more stooped oh. because she was hiding herself. And when I saw her for the first time, you know, she was sitting in the chair, slumped over, oh. didn't, really didn't make eye contact, and her, her hair was sort of over her face. And uh, that's, that's pretty customary. She was very embarrassed, obviously, during the exam, but her, I'm sure. her mom was there. And um, Poor thing. it took, you know, it took a couple months. There's, there's, it's not a straightforward breast augmentation. You have to expand the chest right. and, well, and do young, things. But, but our target was to get it done by, you know, May, the yeah. end of May. And we made it Yay! in time for the prom. She came in about a week before and she gave me the uh, prom invitation, oh, which was great. Oh, how cute. And did she, she have was, a date or did she want you to be? No, she had, no, she had. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> she had a date. And she was standing upright and her shoulders were back. Okay. 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 Her shoulders were back. She was standing upright. Her mom was beaming. Oh. You know, this was a happy young woman. Right. And, uh, and it wasn't about, uh, you know, excess. It wasn't about, uh, you know, I want porn star bosoms, no. breasts. It was about a, a right. girl making herself equal, physically uh -huh. equal, to a natural point. Absolutely. It was true reconstructive surgery. Yes, it was. Oh, how sweet. But I'll tell you this. Nobody knows why they're given the lessons they are in life to learn. We question this all the time. But this young lady was given this lesson to learn for whatever reason, and she had to cope. She had to go out every day. She had to get good grades. She had to make friends, despite the fact that she felt something might not be right with her or something was not right with her and uh, you know she did it and now she's got this augmentation to make her in her eyes look totally right and she's going to even thrive more because she's already combated having what was less than in her mind so you know parents if you're out there listening or kids if you're out there listening and uh, your child or you have a serious problem with one of your physical attributes that's really affecting your life, really affecting your self-esteem, don't be ashamed of it. Bring it in to a plastic surgeon or a pediatrician and have them look at it because it's totally valid now. It's not the 20 years ago. It's totally valid. There are doctors across this country that will take care of it for you. Okay. You've been listening to Top 1260 KTRC. We'll be right back with an inner beauty tip by Testa Gange and then later after that, Dr. Scott Thomas.